Welcome back. This is day three of our eight days through the book of 2 Samuel. Today we read probably, if not the central moment in the Old Testament, certainly one of the central moments in the unfolding history of how God was preparing the world for the coming of the Messiah. Today we read 2 Samuel chapter 7, which is the Davidic covenant. God had, through history, been preparing the world for the coming of the, of the Messiah, the Savior of the world, through making successive covenants. And each of the covenants that God made built upon what the previous covenants had done and moved history forward in a great leap towards when the fullness of the time would come. And here today we see God put the, the, the cap, the pinnacle moment, um, on all of the covenants that he made first with Adam and then with Noah and then with Abraham and then with uh, Israel through Moses. These are all covenants and now God makes a covenant with David. But it's not the details of the Davidic covenant that I actually want to discuss with you today. It is the effect that the Davidic covenant had on David himself. So in chapter 7, we read of the covenant itself and David's response to it. He, he goes into the temple and he is flabbergasted by the promises which God has made him. The most staggering of which was that one of his descendants would reign eternally on his throne. You know, not a thousand years, not ten thousand years, not ten million years, eternally. And so David is, is flabbergasted. He goes into the temple and he prays. Actually, the promise is back to God. He says, Lord, now please do as you have said, because you've said it. So now I'm going to pray that you do it. A couple of chapters later in, in uh, chapter 9, I want to read verse 1 to you. Now David said, Is there still anyone who is left of the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? And what I want to point out to you here is how the covenant faithfulness of God to David because he had just defeated the Philistines again, and he could see God is doing exactly what he promised to do in the covenant that he made with me. It stirs David to be faithful to a covenant that he made previously with Jonathan. And we read of, of that three times in the book of 1 Samuel. Uh, first in chapter 18, we read verse 3, Then Jonathan and David made a covenant. Because he loved him as his own soul. That covenant is then renewed in chapter 20. Oh, this is verses 14 to 17. This is Jonathan speaking to David. And you shall not only show me the kindness of the Lord while I am still alive that I may not die. But you shall not cut off your kindness from my house forever. No, not when the Lord has cut off every one of the enemies of David from the face of the earth. So Jonathan made a covenant with the house of David saying... Let the Lord require it at the hand of David's enemies. Now Jonathan again caused David to vow because he loved him, for he loved him as his own soul. That was the second time. And there we see specifically how Jonathan says, Swear to me that even after I'm, after I'm dead, you will show your faithfulness to my descendants. Because I know you're going to be king. I, I won't be king after my father. I know the kingdom's been given to you, but it pleases me that it is. I don't want to be king. I, I love you as I love my own soul. I love you like a brother. But I want you to swear to me, you will care for my children. And David swears. And then the third time, so by the mouth of two or three witnesses, every match is established. This is repeated twice. So it happens three times. Uh, here the covenant is once again renewed. This is chapter 23, verses 17 and 18. And Jonathan said to David, Do not fear, for the hand of Saul my father shall not find you. You shall be king over Israel, and I shall be next to you. Um, unfortunately, that was not the case. Jonathan was to die. Even my father Saul knows that. So the two of them made a covenant, or they renewed the covenant before the Lord. And David stayed in the woods. So the verse that I read you earlier shows us that after David has become king, God has made the, the covenant with him. Now David is stirred because of God's faithfulness to him in the covenant to be faithful to the covenant vows he has made. And so he asks, is there anybody else still of Jonathan's household that I may show kindness to him? 
because of my covenant with Jonathan. And they say, yes, there's the son that he had. His name is Mephibosheth. And in fact, that covenant faithfulness that David shows to Mephibosheth lasts many years. We see Mephibosheth coming up again and again throughout the, the book. And what I want to say to you today is, is this. David was stirred to being a good friend to Jonathan, a covenant faithful friend because of God's covenant faithfulness to him. And the same should be true of us. God has made a covenant with you in his son, Jesus Christ. It's called the new covenant. And God has, as you well know, been incredibly faithful to that covenant. And he will be until the day you die and he takes you home to be with him in heaven. God is a good father and he is faithful to his children. Now, God's goodness to you and covenant faithfulness should stir you to want to be faithful to your commitments to your friends. And so really, <laughs> it may seem like a, a strange point that I want to make after all of that. And it is simply this. Be a good friend to your friends. It is good to be a good friend in life. And I want to stir you today to be like David, to think upon your friends. Think upon the commitments that you've made to your friends. Think of what you've shared together, the times you've had. Think of the troubles that they've endured. Think of the trouble that they may be in now. And I am asking you to be a good friend. You know, Jesus was the best of all friends. He said to his disciples, I don't call you servants anymore. I call you friends. And he says, I'm going to show you how much I love you as my friends. I'm going to give my life for you. For greater love has no one than this, than to lay down his life for his friends. And Jesus did that very thing. He made good on the promise that he had made his friends. He went to the cross and he gave his life for them so that they could have life. And let us look at that example. Now, that's not just an example. Jesus did die on the cross to actually take our sin upon himself. But the example of Jesus' faithfulness to his friends and his love for his friends should stir us to be faithful to our friends. And that obviously means looking out for your friends, but it also means looking out for their children, as David did for Jonathan. He looks out for the children of Jonathan, Mephibosheth. So what can you do to bless the children of your friends? You know, friendship is, is one of the great gifts that we have in life. And my fear is that myself included, we get so busy with our affairs. And we sometimes take our friends for granted and we take our friends kindness toward us for granted. And their generosity toward us. And I want to stir you today. Don't take your friends for granted. Put effort into your friendships. Be a good friend because Jesus has been a good friend to you. See you tomorrow.